Okay, uh, in the name of Lord Jesus I speak. Now to summarize, yeah, uh, the last part of chapter 1, I think at least we can learn a few uh, very important lessons. And the first is, we turn back to chapter 1. Chapter 1, yeah. Um, verse 10. Chapter 1, verse 10. Uh, I think this is an example given by uh, David uh, when he lamented over the death of King Saul, you know, someone who pursued him hotly to get rid of him, right? And yet here we find that he was able to what, lament uh, for him and cry for him and say that this must not be what? Must not be told in Geth. You know that Geth is a Philistine city and, and Geth represent what? The foreigners, those who attack the city of God. You know that Philistine are the sworn enemies of what? Of the chosen people of God. Here, this bad news must not be spread out within the bounds of the community. Okay? Now, so the precious lessons that we can learn from here is that anything unpleasant, anything bad in the church must not be told to what? Gentiles, non-believers. You know, sometimes in, 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 in certain churches, yeah, you know, surprisingly, even truth seekers you know, came to say to us that you know, this guy here is saying about you know, people in the church. Uh, what is going on here? Okay? We know that this is wrong. Okay? So this is the first lesson. We must learn to what? To seal up our lips very tightly. Okay? Now, in fact, we should adopt all the great example given in the scriptures like Daniel, like Nehemiah, you know, when they saw the imperfection of the church, the first thing that they did is what they cried for the people and they considered themselves to be one of the sinners. Okay? Now, the second thing, if you look at verse 13, chapter 1, verse 13, O inhabitant of Lachish, we know that that is the place which represents what? The beginning of the sin of Zion, because that is the place of compromise. Right? Now, we need to understand we cannot compromise what? The truth of God, and we must have nothing to do with any sort of teachings or belief which is not. Uh, which is not acceptable in the sight of God, or which is not biblical. Right? We must get rid of all this. Right? Now the third, which is the last verse, is the time to weep, like what Micah did, okay? In chapter 1, verse 8, and chapter 1, verse what? Verse 16. <coughs> right? Chapter 1, verse 16, is the time to weep. Right? Now, so when you see that, uh, the church is not doing well, you know, members stop coming to church, or when you find that, you know, there, there hasn't been any uh, truth seekers coming or whatever, time to be. Get what I'm saying? Right? Now, that's why I find that this book is a very important book, because not only it tells us about the history of the people of God, it actually teaches us to have a right mindset, right mentality in dealing with different situations in the church. Right? That's, that's the, the attitudes to have. That's why I have been asking you a question. You, will you tell people about the bad things of your family? No. You won't go around telling anyone. Right? So that's the, that's the, the mentality, okay? Oh. Come to chapter 2. Alright, look at chapter 2. Here it talks about the evil people, yeah? Now, who devise iniquity and work out evil on their bed. And morning light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. Alright, now here you'll find that these people have become so corrupt. Nothing good can come out from them because within them is wickedness. I've shown you a verse already just now. It says, just like water wells up from a well, 
and wickedness wells up from them. Where is it? Remember that? <laughs> you don't, do you? Jeremiah. I saw someone say it very quietly without confidence. Okay, Jeremiah. Chapter 6. Hey. You, you're reading from your notes, yeah? Okay, Jeremiah chapter 6. Right, we look at uh, verse 7. Chapter 6, verse 7. As a fountain wells up with water, so she wells up with her wickedness. Violence and plundering are hurt in her. Before me continually are grief and wounds. Now, so because the entire city had become uh, corrupt, that's why you find that what you know, uh, what is what is you know, witness in the city is nothing but corruptions. Okay, now, so here in Micah chapter two, it talks about the evil doers. Yeah, now they actually plan for you know their wicked deeds, that devise iniquities. Right, so it's like. The entire being of the person is corrupt. Chapter 2, verse 1. My cup. Right. Now, I'm going to read uh, uh, Psalms chapter 36. Turn to Psalms chapter 36. Uh, we look at verse 4, yeah? Just look at verse 4 first. Uh, chapter 36, verse 4. Uh, can I get someone to read? Yesterday we stopped at who? Who is the next one to read? Okay. Please read. Who's turn to read? Amanda or who? Anita. Okay. Chapter 36, verse 4. Psalms. Okay, sorry. Uh, hearing problem. Okay. Now, he devises wickedness on the bed. Okay. Now, again, you see, uh, it's like the plan beforehand. Isn't it? You know, how to do wicked things. Yeah, how to get rid of these people. How to what? How to, you know, take more uh, land or more fields for themselves. The plan. Okay. Now, now, if you look at uh, verse uh, what, uh, uh, verse one, yeah, an oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. Now, this is like a, a what, a revelations given to uh, David, okay, and here it says there is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates. The words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. Now, here is not talking about those who did not know God. In fact, it talks about those who, those who knew God. Now, how do we know that it's talking about those who knew God before? Now, if you look at verse 3, it says, He has ceased to be wise and to do good. Meaning, previously, there were good. There were wise. Now, you know that in the context of Proverbs, yeah, a wise person is someone who fear God, isn't it? Huh? Now, here, you find that this person did not fear God anymore. That's why his deeds turn wicked. Okay, now, this is a very important principle. Yeah? Last point. <coughs> I 
use the word res reverence. Is it correctly spelled? Oh. All right, now, so, you know, if reverence is found in our heart, you find that whatever, you know, whatever comes out from us will be good, will be wise, be kind. What else? Give me one more example. <laughs> okay la, gentle la. Okay. All right. Now you can imagine. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. This one. I don't like it. Truthful. Now you find that when you remove this, what happened? What will happen to a person if he? If he or she removes this from his life or her life, what will happen to the person? Okay. Now, here. I use another another word. Vinration. Uh, Have you heard of this before? the same okay. <laughs> okay you remove this so in your life come up what does it come up eh? opposite wickedness not bad wickedness okay this one cruel and here eh? foolish Unfaithful, lie, okay. There's a simpler version. Okay. No. This is what happened to the people of God, okay? Now, you find that they were given the law of Moses. Alright? That's why God expects them to be good, to be kind, to be wise, to be truthful in their life. And for some reason, because of this is removed, when the word of God is removed, and you find that there is no veneration towards God in their life. And therefore, what came out from them is nothing but evil. <coughs> right? So today, if we keep the word of God, this fear of God in our heart, then you find that whatever comes out from us should be neatly in line with the word of God. So we ask ourselves, do we have this in our heart? Do we have this? 50, 50, la. 50 good, 50 bad. Do we have this? Do we have this? Oh, you. How come everyone is so quiet? It's a simple question. Do we fear God? We fear God with our mouth, with our lips, or we fear God? You sure? Time will tell. Okay. Okay, we come back. <laughs> All right. Uh, to. Okay, chapter 2. Huh? Okay, Micah, chapter 2. Now, how is it that these people have become so wicked? Now, if you look at the second part of verse 1, it says, because it is in the power of their hands. All right? Uh, that's why this is very dangerous, okay? You know, especially in the church, yeah? If someone is not well trained spiritually, right? If he is not uh, spiritually cultivated, and yet at the same time, it is if he is given p 
power and position to serve in the church, you find that that position will corrupt him. Will surely corrupt him. You know, that's, that's why do not be surprised. Sometimes it seems that the church does not give you any work to do. It's not that the church does not want you to do anything for God. Rather, sometimes we feel that, you know, for younger people like you are, you need what, more time to be trained up spiritually so that you become mature in all the things that you do. Before you do it, you would think very carefully. You understand what I'm saying? Right? You know, I was young before, but not anymore. You tend to be very impulsive. Is it also? Oh, find it so hard to it. Without, without, you know, thinking about it carefully. Alright? I want you to read a, a verse, yeah? This one is very dangerous. Yeah? E- even if you are the, let's say you are, you are, you are one of the top guys from what? From Harvard or whatever. You are very gifted, you know. But the church may not need you if you are not cultivated spiritually. Seriously. You know the workers will discuss. This guy, he's graduated from Harvard, so what? Put him aside. Because he does not show any reverence towards God. He's not qualified to serve. You get what I'm saying? What, God's, what God looks for is not the talents you have. It's the heart. It's the heart. It's the heart that matters. Do we fear God? That's the question. Right? So you are here, you are here yeah, to be trained to fear God more than anything else. Right? Okay. Now, uh, where am I now? Okay, we turn back to my car. Yeah? Alright, turn back to my car. Uh, look at uh, chapter 2. Huh? Now, again, I want to focus on the last part because it is in the power of their hand. Alright? Now, that's why, you know, the Bible says we shouldn't appoint a novice to be an elder. Meaning, we should not simply usher anyone into the service of the Lord without properly training the person concerned. Right? That's why sometimes you find that it takes years for someone to, to reach maturity. Right? Now, even some people who were having some, who are having you know, position in the church, they fall because they are not able to control themselves. There is no veneration, there is no reverence towards God. That is the main cause of the downfall of the workers of God in the church. Right? That's why we hope that you know, all of you who are here, you can really train yourself up to become God-fearing. That is the most important thing. If you fear God, then show it in your life. Who is that? Right? Okay. Now, uh, we turn back to uh, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 2. <coughs> now, the covet field and take them by violence, also houses and seize them, so they oppress a man and his house, a man and his inheritance. This is the behavior. This is their behavior. Now, I want you to look at uh, something similar uh, to this. Um, uh, Isaiah, okay, turn to Isaiah. Mm, chapter 5. Huh? Okay, now can someone please read verse 8 and verse 9? Mm, verse 8 and verse 9. Here, you know, it's a, like a kind of uh, judgment yeah, pronounced against those who what coveted the houses from others, right? And this uh, was the practice in the time of Micah. It's a very serious 
serious, serious what? Offense against God. Okay, can you give me an example in the Bible? Someone has taken the, the vineyard or the field of another person by force, by false allegation, by false accusation. So eventually, you know, the person was removed and was killed. Uh, even a two years old kid, no. So happy. Uh. Everyone knows. Give something different, please. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Any other example? I see. What? <laughs> David. Oh, David took the, the wife of who? Uriah. Okay. Any other example? Okay, there's only one. That's the only one. Okay, never mind. All right, now we come back to chapter 2. Now, you find that this is the reaction of God, yeah? You know, to these people. Therefore, thus says the Lord Bill, Again, this family I am devising disaster from which you cannot remove your neck. Nor shall you walk haughtily, for this is an evil time. Okay, now so God is going to do what? To, 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 to judge these people. It's called, we call this retribution yeah, from God. All right? now, that's why we have been saying this. Any wrong that is done or willful uh, you know, uh, uh, act against another person, then God, you'll find that God will not let it go. Now, you know, there's a verse which says that, do, do, do you laugh at people? Do you guys laugh at people before? Have you ever laughed at people, someone before? Yeah? Who did you laugh at? Uh, tell me lah. Huh? <laughs> Who did you laugh at? No, all of you lah. It just happened to my fingers, pointing at you. Okay. <laughs> you like laughing at people? <laughs> Can you tell me who? The preachers, especially Preacher FF. Yeah. Yeah. This guy. <laughs> okay. Have you ever laughed at anyone before? Like who? Huh? Mom. Your mum. Oh, you. Your mom. Do you love your mom? Yes, why? She's shorter than you now. <laughs> Do you love at anyone? You know the Bible says, yeah? You know what the Bible says? Let's say you're walking. If you see a beggar, you say, ha ah, ha these kids. <laughs> What do you say then? Ha yi, ha yi, ha yi. You say ha yi? Ha yi, huh? <laughs> you, you know the Bible says if you mock at this guy here that's equal to insulting God very serious right? can you show me the verse? Deuteronomy? no is it Deuteronomy? it's Proverbs it's Proverbs Um, let me see. Oh, there's a verse, I can't remember. 17 verse? Verse 5. Uh, okay. Um, no, no graduation. This one is... <laughs> it's not exactly the, what I'm asking for. It's okay. Okay, we read uh, chapter 17, verse 5, and then we read uh, chapter 14, verse 31. Okay? All right, now, verse 5. 
He who mocks the poor reproaches his maker. He who is glad at calamity will not go unpunished. Right? Now, if you mock at someone who is poor, well, be the person a believer or, or, or not, okay? You say, ah, well, whatever. I'm mocking. Right? Now, we look at the Proverbs chapter 14. Now, he who oppresses the poor, just like what the people in the time of Micah did, reproaches his master, his maker. Chapter 14, verse 31. But he who honors, honors him has mercy on the needy. Now, if you honor God, then you will show what? Mercy. Why? That's why I said the, this, this thing is very important, isn't it? This thing here. You honor God, then you will be. If you honor God, you will be. Kind. Uh, if you're not kind, it means that you. Hallelujah. Simple logic, yeah? Very simple logic. This will be your test question. <laughs> you get it now? Yeah? Now, so, because the nation of Israel has has lost this reverence towards God. That's why whatever came out from them is wicked. Okay, now, <clears throat> when we come back, uh, look at chapter 2, verse 4. Now, so this, uh, this is a description of what will happen to them and how they would cry, you know, and because God is going to remove uh, His heritage and God is going to what? Uh, uh, Punish the apostate, but those who commit apostasy. Okay, now basically verse four is talking about that. You know, God is going to punish them. You know, whatever God has given to them shall be taken away. Now, can I ask you a question? What has God given to us today? What has He given to us? Only life. <laughs> okay, what else? <laughs> Life, yes. What else? Holy Spirit, okay. Okay, what else? Okay, what else? Do you think he has kept do you think he has kept anything back? Do you think God has kept has, has kept something back for himself? No? So he has given everything to us? Huh? So he has given you a lot of gadgets? <laughs> we turn to Ephesians, yeah? Okay, we turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Okay, we read uh, verse 3. Chapter 1, verse 3. Hmm. He has given us and blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now, where is this heavenly places? Where do you think these heavenly places? Where do you think they are? Hmm? Okay. All right now, Paul says it's in Christ, isn't it? In Christ, right? Now, in Christ means you are in the church of God. Now, we know that this church here is not of the world. Yeah? This church is in heaven. Right? Now, because of our belief in Jesus, we have been baptized into Christ. Therefore, we are in the heavenly places. So, insofar as we keep ourselves in the truth, in God, in Jesus, and in the body of Christ, 
then you find that the blessing shall remain. Everything that is in heaven has been given to us according to Paul. Every spiritual blessing. God has not kept anything back. Every single one. That's why we are so blessed. We are so blessed. We are tremendously blessed. Okay? Now, the thing is, if we move away from this position, being in Christ, then what happens? All the blessings shall be taken away from us. Now, by looking, by looking at the example in the Old Testament scriptures, yeah, for example, you know, when, when they kept the law of God, yeah, when they conducted themselves in the manner that the law required them to do, you find that God's protection was with them. Right? And you find that God's providential care was with them. Right? Even in times of trouble or danger or whatever, you find that they were protected by God. Now, the reverse is true. When they move away from God, then what happened? God lifted His protection away from them. And then, God allowed what? the onslaught of their enemies to come upon them. Right? Now, so, so today, if we move away from this position, yeah, what we will witness is the onslaught of Satan. Simple as that. Alright, now we turn back to chapter 2. Uh, look at verse 5. You know, the, the desecration is so severe that it seems that you know no one is there to determine the boundary by lots in the assembly of the Lord. Now, it's like no one is there to uh, decide, you know, uh, what is right and what is wrong. Okay, so this the um, uh, the response or the reactions of God yeah, to this people, this evil people. Okay, now verse six to verse seven, I have already briefly mentioned, uh, talking about you know the false prophet. Yeah? In fact, it's from verse six all the way down to verse eleven. Now you find that this is something very serious. Yeah, you know, when lies and deception rule in the community, then what will happen to the community? Now, look at the question posed here. I want you to look at verse 7. You who are named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord restricted? Now, we know that the house of Jacob refers to, co to the community of faith. It seems that at that point in time, the spirit of the Lord is no longer present with them. Why? Because of lies and Deception. Right? Now, you find that one of the things that God would do in order to rebuild the latter temple of the Lord is by removing what? Deception and lies. Alright? I want you to look at the book of Zechariah. Now, when you study the book of Zechariah, you need to understand that the background of the book of Zechariah is about the rebuilding of the temple of God which signifies the rebuilding of the end time true church. Alright, now we turn to Zechariah. <coughs> chapter, chapter 5. Yeah. Now, Zechariah chapter 5. Uh, the vision of the flying scroll. Okay, now verse 3. Uh, next to read. <laughs> now verse 4. Next to read. Verse 
Now, it seems that in this vision alone, yeah, alone, two types of people that God would judge. The first one is what? Based on verse 3 and verse 4. Thieves. The second? Perjurer. Okay, now if you look at uh, verse, uh, those who swear falsely, uh, uh, you know, like bear for, false witness against another person. Now, that's why in the church we need to have faith in God, okay? If anyone who has falsely accused you, who have, you know, borne false, false witness against you, you need to trust in God, believing that He would vindicate for you. You understand what I'm saying? There's no need for you to take actions, you know, take things onto your own hand, you know, like, you know, to go and vindicate for yourself. There's no need for that. Right? Oh, I think the second one is quite clear, but I want you to understand who is the thief in the context of the scriptures. Or oh, someone has stolen my gadget, so obviously he's a, he's a what? He's a thief. But this is not what uh, Zechariah is talking about. Who is a thief in the Bible? Who is a thief? Ay, yeah, yeah. Who is a thief? Are you a thief? <coughs> you are going to graduate soon, you know that. You don't even know what a thief is. Huh? Who is a thief? Remember what Jesus said? You know what Jesus said? Jonah, Jonah, John. The Gospel of John. Chapter 10. Where is it? You know the good, the good shepherd? Okay, now verse 10. Okay, read, uh, sorry, read verse 8 also. Hmm. Uh, whoever came before me, okay, verse 8, uh, came before me, mean those who, you know, those who, what, came, how can I put it? Like if I did not follow the instruction of Jesus, okay? I had my own, 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 whatever, own teachings, okay? Then I'm considered a, a thief. Now, what is the, the, the work of, of a thief here? Is to, is to what? Is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It's not talking about a normal thief, right? It's talking about those who go against Jesus. Basically, those who go against... <coughs> The command and the teachings of Christ in the context of the Bible is called a thief. So this guy here, yeah, comes in with an intention to steal, to steal what? To steal the word of God, to kill, to kill what? To kill the sheep, to destroy what? To destroy the sheep fold. You get what I'm saying? Then he is called a thief. Now, so in the rebuilding of the temple of God, according to Zechariah, this guy must be removed. Otherwise, the church cannot be built up. Yes. I know. I haven't finished. No. They cannot eat. <laughs> this group is not serious. They cannot eat. Okay. Now, one more yeah, before we finish. Yeah. Uh, where is it? Uh... Zechariah also. Zechariah. Very quickly, I go. I finish that one, and then we go and eat. What is it? Hallelujah. Okay, chapter thirteen. Hmm. When we read verse two. Let's read verse 2. 
verse 2 and verse 3. Yes, please. Hmm. Verse 3. Now, this is one of the things that God would like to get rid of as well, as far as the rebuilding of the temple of God, the end time true church is concerned, what is to remove what? Falsehood and false prophecies. Okay, can you see the seriousness or the severity of God towards these people? Right? Now, that's why you find that for the church to build up falsehood and uh, and what false prophecy must be removed. Right? That's why, class, remember this. For us to build up the church, we need the truth of God to be intact. Right? The truth of God cannot be disturbed, cannot be changed, cannot be what? Cannot be removed. So it all depends on you in the future because you are the next generation of workers. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, let's pray.